All right, I have a few things to say on your stuff, Ian. I've been watching you on and off. I don't watch every single video of any of anybody, pretty much. Uh, but I'm getting familiar slowly. That's how I do it. I absorb you know, the sense. It's not just the word someone says. You know, there's a big sense to how people present themselves. Okay, on we're one. That I just that we're all one. I don't like that. We're not all one, really. That's misleading. We're all uh, connected. We're all connected. But um, and so you could say we're all one. But the point of that we're not all one is that oneness is is arbitrary. We have good reasons for honing in on some purpose that makes us choose uh, the identity a particular way, and it's really useful to do that. But conceptually, identity, you know, is is blurry. Um, let's say you use a river to separate two countries, to give identity to two different countries. Uh, and you use a border. Uh, I mean, you use a river as one of your borders. Uh, that's pretty definite. That's a pretty good reason. And it doesn't seem too arbitrary. But even then, it's blurry. Because if you go up there, what is it, halfway in the river? And the river can shift. And, uh, of course, there's always some level of, of blurriness. And that's an example where you know it's a low level. So we're not all one, we're all connected, and we all can be one, and I think it's an important difference. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with your sentiment, you know, I know they have a good intention with that, no doubt. On organized religion, I, I'm with you, I think organized religion is a big mistake. Furthermore, I have a bit of an idea as to uh, some principal reasons why, uh, and what's really going on, what the debate is there, and it's really, um, I think it's encapsulated by ancient skepticism, where they, they basically, the skeptics identified three kinds of, three branches of philosophy. And, uh, in other words, in the whole sphere of philosophy, there's these three divisions, and uh, they're the dogmatists, you see, and that's what you're talking about, the book learning. There's really nothing wrong with reading books. They're not dead words or anything like that. A book... Uh, or something written is like a rock in the ocean that you can hold on to, or a boat. Maybe it's a boat you can you can hold on to and and sail with. So it's it's not that it's the it's this it's the dogmatism. Dogmatism is where you believe you already have the answer. And then another kind of philosophy is pyrrhonistic skepticism, which believes that we're always seeking knowledge forever. And um, and then the third kind of philosophy is what the ancient skeptics called academic skepticism, and what I call nihilism. The um, the problem with the religions that we're thinking of is this uh, is is this dogma, and the reason they have these unitary leaders as a characteristic is because. Part of dogma is hierarchy. And to understand hierarchy, it would be useful to understand the metaphor of the Roman arch for society. The Roman arch is shaped like, classically like so. And at the very top, there's a keystone. And this keystone does not support the weight of the arch at all, um, but, it, but it still keeps the arch from falling down because each side sort of leans in and it just holds it apart. And as you convert that arch to the um, to the post on either side, uh, there's more and more um, force as you get further down, uh, holding up the whole structure of all these stones in the arch. And this is a metaphor for society. Um, that is hierarchy. It's where these ideas come from, and uh, where the idea comes from that you come up to one one stone. Further. Furthermore, if you're following so far, I mean, I'll just add, the, the forces in this metaphor relate to different things. So the force of gravity relates to menial labor, so that the further you get down the arch, the lower class you have, the more menial labor, because you're supporting the arch, the weight. So the weight is this kind of menial labor. Lateral force, lateral force back and forth, is intellectual labor. And so as you go up in the arch, ultimately at the very top, you have purely intellectual labor. The forces are all lateral. 
and as you go down, you increase, you have a mixture and uh, of slowly increasing menial labor down at the, the bottom wedge of the curved part of the arch, you know, the actual arch, which is, makes up the whole arch then makes up the ar aristocracy. And then the posts make up the commoners and peasants and hoi polloi. So, these are related. Dogma is related to this structure. Okay. Worshipping versus living the example. That's a great point. See, I think you get the grain of truth in a lot of things that I even would not really correct you on, but maybe add to, or maybe not correct you on, but disagree with you. Um, but there's things like this in there. I think you're exactly right. Uh, living by example is a much more natural way to learn from somebody else that you have that worship kind of complex with. I found with artists I can get that worship. I'm, I'm an atheist, but I found with artists I can get that kind of feeling. And I know there's, you know, biochemicals involved. There's all kinds of biological reasons maybe involved that we can do that. And, you know, at the very least, you can really respect something about these people. So, you know, so why not? And, and again, it's, it's a living by example. And then if you don't want to follow their example, then you just, you know, you, you respect them in sort of the modern sense of, you know, you give them props, you treat them as though they're, uh, they got something together that maybe you can't even understand. Um, respect. Now, on the Iran thing, phew, you know, I haven't even paid, I love to, I follow politics usually, but I haven't even paid that close attention to this, but did you see what Obama said about this whole thing? He basically said that uh, when Bush vetoes, the Democrats will have to cave. So, 